Hello, this is Vivica Williams and you're watching Head to Head. Today we're discussing judiciary reform in Ukraine and more specifically the Public Integrity Council which has just been elected. Now they will assist the High Qualification Commission of Judges of Ukraine in evaluating judicial candidates. To talk more about this, we're welcome to the studio Mikhailo Jernikov, coordinator of the Public Integrity Council and director of the DeJour Foundation. Hello, and thank you so much for being with us, Mukailo. Hello, thanks for having me. So first of all, explain to us what the Public Integrity Council is. It is a unique uh, body, if I may, nothing like this exists in the world. Uh, that's our invention. Um, it's, it's a civic body that's official, that's provided for by the law, that has to, um, so we have to um, analyze the judges and the judicial candidates in order to assist, like the law says, the public integrity, or the Qualification Commission, which is a judicial council, uh, but at the same time to kind of have a double check on these judges, whether they're fit for the job or not, especially when it comes to integrity, which is still a problem amongst Ukrainian judges. And you said there's nothing like this in the world. Right. There's um, different forms of engagement of the civil society into the selection or ev evaluation of the judges, but in this specific form, in the world, yeah, they exist. Sometimes they are inside the Judicial Council, sometimes they're in some other but way, in but, but, the, but in this form of the Integrity mm -hmm. Council is a separate institution that has to evaluate and they write the opinions about the judges and then it presents them to the Commission and publicly, uh, nothing like this exists. Wow, so, and this has been a, an issue uh, Historically, Ukrainians have had a low, um, have lowly valued the judicial system very low when it comes right. to the integrity of judges. So what is the process of selecting judges here? Um, it is quite a comprehensive process. It starts with the, um, it's different stages. It starts with the evaluation uh, of um, judicial competence, of the competence of the, of the people who want to become judges, and then uh, then comes the integrity and social skills and the psychological testing, so it has different stages. Uh, we jump in where uh, the integrity is analyzed. So after the um, um, candidates for judgeship, uh, they um, do the examination, we screen them, we, we, we look at their background, we look at what they, uh, their court decisions, we look at their property. Luckily, there's lots of um, public registers that are open in Ukraine. Um, there's lots of uh, e-declarations, electronic declarations of the public officials and the judges. So we have quite a bit of information uh, to, to look out for. And then to, when we, if we see that uh, a certain candidate or a judge does not correspond to the integrity criteria, of which there are many, mm -hmm. we issue a negative opinion, an opinion that the judge does not correspond uh, the, 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 the adequate position. And then uh, the High Qualification Commission has to agree, or if they want to disagree with our opinion, they have to uh, basically overrule that with a two-thirds majority of their composition. And so can you tell me, has this, this has only been approved, so it hasn't been uh, put into practice as yet? It's been here for a while, uh -huh. it's um, only the second composition of the Integrity Council, we call it PIC 2.0, uh -huh. um, that has been elected right now. So the, the previous composition, which I was also a member, uh, we were active for two years. Um, of course it was a very new experience, we did not uh, no. A lot of learning. Ex a lot of learning, of, especially especially given that we do not have any funds, we don't receive any funds from the state budget, so it's basically a volunteer work of analyzing thousands of judges and judicial candidates, which is a, um, a challenge, but to be honest. But the uh, government does respect and use, the, honors the, the work of the group and well, takes this into account. In, in a way, uh, because unfortunately uh, most, basically two-thirds of our, of our uh, um, opinions were um, did not were overturned. Were, yeah, or, were overturned basically mm -hmm. by the um, high qualification commission of judges. But at least a third were taken into account. So these judges did not were not successful in their um, bid to become judges. Yeah, becoming judges or or, yeah, or staying in their positions. And were these made public? So does the public? Is there some way of creating open data and making this available to the public and reporting so people will know? The, there's some questions about the integrity. Of sure, the, that's our common strength. So we only rely, or mostly rely, on on the international, uh, on two basically two major players. One is the Ukrainian society, of course, that we present our opinions to, that we analyzed, and we, of course, base on on evidence on what we found um, in the appropriate state registers or, or otherwise. 
uh, but also the international community that has to that basically assist Ukraine with the judicial reform that oversees many things and, and that also has to be taken into account, has to be notified about what is happening in, uh, in judicial reform and what, is, what are the specific problems with the candidates so that they can assist better in, uh, in the judicial reform. And how would you uh, say what's needed to get rid of corruption in judges? And as we say, there's been concern from the Ukrainian public over the integrity of judges. This has been one of the most difficult aspects to reform because when it comes to uh, people who may be in high positions who are corrupt, you have a judge, uh, you need to have judges who do not allow this to continue. And, and prosecution has been a difficult issue when it comes to rooting out corruption. So how's that working in rooting out corruption in judges? It's a very good question. Uh, so basically there's two um, different ways that are fighting uh, each other, let's say, uh, from a technical point of view. One is that we, on one hand, trying to implement the European standards regarding judiciary, the impartiality, the independence, the self-governance and so on. On the other hand, we are in the middle of the lustration process and the process of making our, our judiciary uh, efficient, uh, trustworthy, of high uh, integrity. And sometimes the two do not um, go well with each other. For example, there is the principle of irreversibility of the judges. That is one of the principles, one, one of the uh, components of the independence of, of the judges, but at the same time, the goal of the reform is to uh, remove the old judges and right. replace them with the better new ones, so it kind of go against uh, each other. The second thing is one of the European standards for judicial councils is that the majority of judges elected by judges, because who right. other than the judges knows their profession better? However, on the other hand, you have that issue of possibly creating a, a what they used to call a good old boys club, as in people who are electing people who are also, or maybe be corrupt or... or exactly, well. and that's something that happened just recently with the election of the several members of the High Council of Justice that uh, have obvious um, um, mismatch between their income or property or that have other concerns, to say the least, about their integrity. So uh, our answer to that is that uh, we should trust and trust in um, selection of judges and the, um, let's say, renewal of the judiciary uh, to uh, those groups that society trusts the most, that are the civil society and the international community. And that is happening, international experts, and that is happening in the processes of the judicial selection with the Public Integrity Council and uh, with the process of selection of the anti-corruption court judges right. with the Public Council of International Experts. When the international experts come here and basically they have a veto right to not let go uh, or let through these candidates that are questionable to say the least. So, but these are, these are very good experiences, but unfortunately neither of the two are the decision makers that make the final decision. It is still the judges elected by judges, the same judges we want to change that are right. um, in charge. So th that, is, that is a conflict we're facing now. So in order to make it better, we have to restructure the, uh, the, the judicial governance body so it incorporates directly the civil society and the international experts. And that leads to the question of how you see judicial reform going so far. You've talked a bit about what needs to be tackled and what's maybe in the uh, works to being tackled. They're looking at fixing or just needs to be in the future. And so how would you uh, rate overall or, or tell us about judicial reform so far in Ukraine? It is a hard, it is, it is a reform that is not going um very smoothly, I, I must say. So there, there is progress, definitely. We changed the constitution regarding judiciary, and it was a change for the better, apart from, the, from this uh, composition of the judicial governance bodies of the High Council of Justice. Unfortunately, that's entrenched in the constitution. Uh, then we also made other uh, blunt steps, like really big steps, uh, creating a new Supreme Court from scratch. But again, in this court, there is a portion of judges, there's a number of judges that are uh, whose integrity is, 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 is uh, well, I can't say questionable because there's certain things that are un unquestioned that are there, but mm -hmm. still they be somehow became the new Supreme Court justices. So mm -hmm. um, there is progress, but uh, in order to, to, to have real results, we have to rethink the judicial governance. That's, that's the point where we really have to work. It is definitely one of the most difficult uh, branches and, and difficult reforms for Ukraine. Oh, absolutely. Thank you so much for being with us today. Thank you very much, Vilka. Thank you. That was Mikhailo Zhernikov, coordinator of the Public Integrity Council and director of the DeJour Foundation. Thank you for watching UATV and stay tuned for more.